All set? All right. Awesome. Hi. Good morning, Mystic Fitness community. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Melissa. I teach every Monday here at 9 a.m. Thank you for joining in. We live stream classes as well as have in-person classes um, in the studio. So please come on in or consider making a donation to our Venmo account at Mystic Fitness. So thank you for tuning in. Happy Monday. And please find a comfortable position on your mat in a laying down position. Begin to allow your body to sink into the earth. And just take a moment and just scan down through your body, starting at the head, making your way down to the toes, not getting stuck in any one area, but just noticing how the body feels this morning. A sense of heaviness, lightness, tension or ease. It's really important to check in with yourself. And if you haven't noticed already, begin to just generally notice the breath, where you feel it the most. It could be the tip of your nose or the rise and fall of your belly or chest. Begin to take some longer, deeper inhales. And you can open your mouth at home and sigh and let it out. One more time, big breath in. Filling your lungs and exhale, release. Take another big breath in. Let it go constrict the back of your throat. Close your mouth. I'm beginning to build some heat here. Using this ujjayi breath. And on the next in-breath, you can begin to wiggle the fingers and the toes. Maybe take a big stretch overhead. Just beginning to wake the body up. With your arms reached overhead, you might drag your left wrist with the help of your right hand over to the right side of the room. You may even cross your left ankle over your right, making a little banana shape here. Opening up the left side body, take a big inhale. And then exhale, return to center, stretch everything long. And take it to the other side. Drag your right wrist over to the left. You can cross the right ankle over the left. Just feeling the right side of the body elongate. And bring it back to center. Big inhale, stretch everything up and long. And then exhale, bend the knees, curl the knees into the chest, give them a squeeze. Here, take the opportunity to Rock back and forth a little bit, side to side. Massaging out the low back. It might feel good to put a blanket underneath your low back at home. And then when you're ready, extend the left leg long. Let it release down to the mat, keeping your right knee into your chest. Give it a squeeze. Inhale, and on the exhale, flex your foot, press your heel towards the sky. Good. Inhale, pull the knee into the chest, and exhale, press the heel away. 
few more times like this. Moving with your breath, allowing the breath to be the basis of your practice as you incorporate movements. Last time, exhale, press the heel away. Pause here for a moment, hands interlaced behind the right thigh. Circle the right ankle five times in one direction and five in the next. And then you can give that right knee a squeeze on a big inhale and on the exhale, drop the right knee out. Just let it release to the outside of your mat, whatever degree you're comfortable with. Inhale, pull the knee into the chest and cross the knee over the body, heading towards the left side of the room. And you can begin to take these side to side motions with your right knee a little wider. You can even begin to make some circles with the knee, extending the leg long and pulling it into your chest while moving side to side. You might hear, hear some snap, crackle, pops here. It's awesome just warming up the hip joint and massaging the low back. A couple times in each direction, just exploring this morning. And then when you feel like your right hip is nice and loved up and warmed up, you can take it to the other side, bringing the left knee into the chest, giving it a squeeze. Inhale, and on the exhale, press the heel away from you. Toes pointing towards shin. And then again, moving with your breath here, just connecting with your inhale and your exhale and letting that move your body. Two more times on this side. Inhale. Exhale, press the heel away. One last time. When that heel is up in the sky, take a moment here with the hands interlaced to circle out the ankle a couple times in each direction. Noticing how it feels on your shins, your calves, your toes. And then big inhale, pull the left knee into the chest, exhale, let it drop out to the side. Inhale, pull the knee to the chest and let it cross your body, heading towards the right side of the room. And allow this to turn into some circles here with the knee, taking wider back and forth, side to side. Notice the subtle differences on each side. Might feel good to hold one spot for a moment and see how that feels. And then when you feel like your left hip is nice and warmed up and happy, you can bend the knees, place the soles of the feet on your mat underneath your knees. Begin to become aware of your pelvic bone and your ab muscles and begin to mindfully tuck the pelvis underneath and start to feel your abs wake up a little bit. Press into the heels of the feet and slowly begin to lift the glutes off the mat just by a couple inches, squeezing the glutes, driving down through the heels, core engaged, and slowly release down one vertebrae at a time. And take a few more glute bridges like this, moving nice and slow and with control, making sure to keep that pelvis tucked under so it's the abs doing the work, grounded through the feet. Moving slow and gently, especially coming down on the low back, squeezing at the top. We'll do 10 more here. Noticing your breath, beginning to feel the heat build. Your hands can be alongside your body. You can bend your elbows and make little fists if that helps to kind of drive through the elbows as you push up. And do two more. 
last one hold at the top you can just hold here for a moment or it might feel good to step out that left heel just by a couple inches and then step it back in now with the right foot stepping that out by a couple inches just tapping it and then stepping back in just noticing each individual leg strength big breath in and then slowly release everything down little by little And you can take your time here to maybe roll onto one side and then come up into a seated position on your mat. Making your way to tabletop however you get there. Shoulders stacked over wrists, hips over knees. Taking a moment here to open up the wrists a little bit, maybe just kind of flipping them. Gently, not putting too much pressure on any of the wrist joints, but just showing a little love to the wrists, maybe shaking them out a little bit. And then beginning to take some arches and curls, getting into the back, the shoulders, and an inhale, drop the belly and look up. Smile, and then exhale, press the floor away from you, curl the spine. Moving with your breath once again, just letting that breath move you. And you can begin to take this into some hip circles as well. So incorporating the hips, taking some side to side motions, maybe back and forth presses, letting the neck shake yes, shake no. Just noticing the whole body here. And when you feel ready, you can press your hips back, let them rest over your heels, arms stretch out in front of you, let your forehead rest to a block or a blanket at home, or just onto your mat. Regrounding here for a couple breaths. Tent your fingers, walk them over to the left corner of your mat while actively pressing the hips back and to the right, noticing the side body as you do this. Big in breath, and out breath, walk the fingers back towards center and over to the right, this time tented, while sending your hips back and to the left. Noticing how that switches up the pose a little bit. Big breath in. And then walk your hands back to center, just regrounding here one more moment, evening everything out. And then when you're ready, you can make your way to a tabletop position. And then using your core to lift you all the way up onto your knees, it might feel good to put a blanket or even fold your yoga mat a little bit to give some support to your knees. And from here, you just allow your left leg to go long out to the side. Allow your left hand to rest to the outside of your left thigh. And on an inhale, reach your right arm up and fold over your left leg. We've opened up the side body a couple times already, so this should feel pretty good and open. You can allow your right arm to take some circles here. Noticing how that incorporates the shoulder as well. And when you feel like you've gotten into that right side body and your left hip is nice and warmed up, you can place your hands out in front of you like a tabletop position. Keep your left leg out to the side. And on an inhale, allow your left arm to reach up towards the sky. And exhale, you might fold it underneath your body. You could stay right here, or you may even tap your left shoulder down. One more time, big in-breath, reaching up towards the sky. And exhale, cross underneath your body to your degree of comfort. Might feel good to send the hips back a little bit in order to get the shoulder a little closer to the ground. And then when you're ready, slowly returning, evening everything back out, coming up onto your knees and taking it to the other side now, allowing the right leg to go long. 
you can provide some support for your right leg with your right hand on the outside of your thigh or shin. And on the inhale, send your left arm up long and exhale, fold over to the right side of the room. Incorporating the arms so that you can get into that left shoulder joint. Feeling the left rib cage open up. Noticing the tension in the hip. And then when you're ready, you can let your hands plant like in tabletop. And then allow your right hand to reach up on an inhale. And exhale, cross underneath your body. And you might just hold right here in a little cross, activating the core. Or you may even send your hips back a little bit to allow your right shoulder to tap down. Inhale. Reach up towards the sky, and exhale, fold underneath your body. Just letting yourself soak in this nice little twist here before coming back up onto your knees. And we're going to try something a little bit different today. So I'll turn to the side so you can all see. So from your knees, you can separate them a little bit wider, allow the toes to touch behind you, and then just, if it's in, it might feel good to put a block or a little blanket so you don't have to go as far down onto your heels if that doesn't feel good on your quads and knees. But if it feels good, allow yourself to kind of sit back onto your he heels, or like I said, a blanket or a block at home. And then just like we did in the glute bridges, you tuck your pelvis under and use your glutes to lift yourself up into a little little half deadlift here. Squeeze at the top and back down. Core engaged, spine long, lifting up and squeezing at the top. Pelvis tucked under and release back down. You do five more of these. Squeezing at the top, lifting and slowly releasing down with control. Finding your breath here, finding some form of flow. Your hands can be in front of you at your heart thighs to help you lift up for a little bit of support if you'd like. Just an opportunity here for you to connect with your body and see what feels right. We'll do two more wherever you are. Perfect. And then whenever you're ready, making your way back to tabletop, however you get there, just shaking it out a little bit. Letting the head shake yes, no. And then when you're ready, you can begin to tuck the toes underneath, core engaged, spine nice and long, and begin to lift your hips up and back for a downward facing dog. It might feel good to take some presses here, forward into a plank, see what your alignment is like. Maybe just holding it static feels good for you first thing this morning. You might pedal the feet a little bit, bending one knee at a time. Let your neck hang heavy. And when you're ready, just take your right leg, slowly lift it up towards the sky on a big inhale. Exhale, curl the right knee to the chest. Inhale, send the right leg back up, and exhale, step the right foot towards the right thumb. Find yourself in a low lunge position, taking a moment here to set up your feet, making sure they're hip distance apart, knee stacked over ankle. And you can make your way to a thunderbolt position. Use your core to lift you up. Place your hand to the outside of the right thigh to activate the glute. Send your left arm forward and breathe. Notice the shaking sensations. Notice the opening of the left hip behind you. One more breath. And then allow the left hand to drop to the mat. If you have a block at home, you might like to use that. No matter what you're using under your left hand, make sure you're not pouring too much weight into it. 
just as a nice point as you take your right hand on a big inhale and twist up towards the sky. One more big breath, inhale. And on the exhale, dial your left heel down, rise, find your way into a warrior two position. Noticing the opening on the right hip here. Take a moment, look at your alignment now, making sure from the heel of the front foot to the arch of the back foot is one long line. Imagine pressing the mat away from you using your, your two feet. You're stretching it out long. Allow your shoulders to relax, your pelvis to tuck underneath. Outside of your left foot, heavily engaged. And on the inhale, flip your front palm, reverse your warrior, reaching up towards the sky with your right hand. You can allow the left hand to sneak down the left thigh. Heavy engagement in that front right leg. And then tip it forward, find your side angle, allow your right forearm to come to the inside of your right thigh, your left arm to reach up towards the sky, your fingers to spread wide. And then begin to flow back and forth from a reverse warrior to a side angle. Moving with your breath, maybe inhale, reverse your warrior, and exhale, find a side angle. A few more times like this, just moving at your own pace, your breath, noticing all the work the right leg is doing. And next time you're in that side angle, allow your right hand to let rest on your right shin. Extend the right leg, keep a micro bend in the right knee to protect it and allow your left hand to stay where it is. Twist open, find your triangle. You may even float that right hand. Use your core to keep you engaged. And then when you're ready, you can circle everything down, frame the right foot. And you can step back into a downward facing dog. Inhale, exhale, shift forward into a plank. You might tap your knees down or stay in the plank. I'll tap my knees down for this one. And then on an exhale, lower you all the way down to the mat. You might tent your fingers and find a baby cobra. Or you might push up and find an upward facing dog. Take an inhale. And on the exhale, curl your toes. Push through tabletop if you'd like and find your way to downward facing dog. From here, pedal out the feet. And on a big in-breath, allow your left leg to reach up towards the sky. Exhale, curl the left leg to the chest. Inhale, send it back up. Exhale, left foot steps towards left thumb. Find a low lunge here. Take a moment to set up your feet hip distance apart. Really allow all four corners of the left foot to ground down. As you begin to place your weight into your left foot, place your hand to the outside of the left thigh to activate the glute. Send your right arm forward. Find your thunderbolt position here. Noticing the opening on the right hip now as your leg is extended behind you. The squeezing in the left thigh and the shaking. Big inhale. And on the exhale, you can drop the right hand down. Don't pour too much weight into it. Just use it as a reference point. As on a big inhale, you send your left arm up towards the sky. Twist. One more breath here. And on the exhale, dial your right heel back down. Lift yourself up. Find your warrior two position. Taking a moment here once again to set up that alignment. Really make sure you're grounding the outside of the right foot into the mat. Stretch the shoulders apart. 
Maybe shrug them up and down. Tuck the pelvis underneath. And on the inhale, flip your front palm, reverse your warrior. Noticing the rib cage open. And you can begin to tip this forward into your side angle, allowing the left forearm to come to the inside of the left thigh. Sending your right arm long towards the sky, spreading your right fingers wide. And then taking it back and forth, flowing with your breath. Instead of allowing the movements to control the breath, allow the breath to control the movements. Next time you're in that side angle, you might keep your left hand to your left shin and extend that left leg long and find your triangle here, reaching up towards the sky. Noticing how that feels for the left hip to open up. Big breath here. And you can circle the hands down to frame the left foot. You can step the left foot back. You can optionally take a chaturanga here. Exhale, lowering you halfway down. Inhale up to a baby cobra or upward facing dog. And exhale, down dog. Or you can always skip the push-ups and meet in down dog. Couple resetting breaths here. Take an inhale, and on the exhale, you can walk or float forward. Land in a chair pose here. Toes touch, knees stacked over ankles, hips sitting back. Your arms can go out long or meet in your, at your chest. Allow the feet to step a little bit apart so that you can make room for your left forearm to come to the inside of your left thigh. And twist up to the right with your right hand on an inhale. Utkatasana, chair pose with a twist here. You can hold it or you can flow, maybe sweeping the ground and then reaching back up. Just allowing yourself to stay connected to the knees, the hips, the hamstrings, doing all the work here. And then when you're ready, begin to pour all your weight into your left leg. Keeping the knee a little bent, you can put your hands to your left thigh above your knee, if you'd like, as you begin to send your right leg out long behind you for warrior three variation. Keep the toes flexed. Two more breaths here. And then you can slowly land that right leg down. Taking some dips here before you begin to dip, make sure your feet are distanced, hip distance apart to protect the knee. The knee is stacked over the ankle. And just take some slow dips here, gently tapping the knee down and stand back up. Inhale, knee taps down, exhale, press up. Moving with your breath like this, begin to move at your own pace. And do five more here. Awesome. And then now you can just, whenever you're ready, allow that right knee to drop, or right heel to drop in, giving in to open up to the side of the room, the long side of your mat. Toes, heels in, and you can begin to stack the knees over the ankles and sink the hips down for a goddess pose. Allow the spine to stay straight, the pelvis to tuck underneath. Allowing whatever bubbles up to the surface here to have a space of kindness to be. Sometimes the simplicity of just holding these postures is where the magic really happens. So 
give yourself three breaths here. Really connect to that feeling of heart opening, kindness, that postures like this tend to tend to induce. <laughs> One more big breath. And on the exhale, you can begin to turn towards the back of your mat. Place your weight into your right foot as you s extend it long to the back of the room. Begin to pour your weight into your right leg. If you have a block at home, you might use this as you find your half moon pose, sending your left leg and left arm long towards the sky. As your hand reaches somewhere six to nine inches between in front of your foot, opportunity here to kind of fly and feel that shakiness if you come out no problem at all just find your way back in slowly another big breath here and then slowly releasing your left leg down to the mat you can find your warrior two facing the front of the room and circle your hands frame your left foot step back for a downward facing dog three-legged with your left leg still lifted. Opportunity to bend the knee here and open the hip a little bit. Inhale. And on the exhale, square the hips lower halfway down. Inhale, burst, heart bursts open for baby cobra or up dog. And exhale, curl the toes down your down dog. Maybe some presses back and forth here. Maybe just holding it static feels good. And then when you're ready, take an inhale, bend your knees. You might walk or float to the top of your mat. And then let your hip, hips sink down, toes touch. Find your chair pose. Taking it the flowy twist to the other side now, to making room for your right forearm to touch your right thigh as you twist your left arm open. Again, it might feel good to incorporate some flowy movements here, moving with your breath, or sometimes just holding the postures. It's where those mental challenges are able to kind of be met. One more breath here. And then begin to place all your weight into your right leg. Center, stabilize it. You can place your hands to your right thigh if that helps. As you begin to straighten your right leg, send your left leg back behind you. Toes flexed for warrior three variation. You might extend your arms out long. One breath here. And then slowly with control, allow the left leg to tap down. We'll take some lunges here at your pace. Exhale, you can tap the knee down or inhale, tap the knee down and exhale, press away. Moving at your pace, noticing any subtle differences on each side. We'll do three more here. Awesome. When you feel ready, if for some reason you want more lunges, <laughs> take them, absolutely. But if you feel ready, you can tap that left heel down, opening up to the other side of the room now. And then just here, place your hands to your hips. Allow your toes to go out, your heels to go in, pelvis to tuck underneath. And just with your spine long, allow yourself to use your core. Drop down about halfway until you feel that you might be able to reach the mat or just be able to out of your hip socket a little bit. Finding a wide... left a little bit 
and over to the right. Or even through your legs. A couple more breaths here. on your hips, use your core with as much control as it took you to get here, lift slowly all the way back up to stand. And with your feet wide here, I would be remiss if I did not do some side lunges with you all. So um, you might want to bring your feet in a little bit closer. You might like them a little bit wider for these, but allow your toes to come a little bit more in, not out as wide as they maybe were for forward fold. And then place your hands to your chest or maybe your hips. I like them in front of my chest as you begin to bend your left knee, pour your weight into your left leg, and take a little side lunge here. Take a moment, look at the alignment of your feet. Make sure you're sending your hips back and your knee is stacked over your ankle, but not going too far out. Should be a nice stretch for the inside of the right leg. And then drive through the left heel, stand all the way up. Squeeze at the top, take it to the other side, pouring the weight into the right leg, bending the knee, making sure you're aligned, Put then driving through the right heel to stand all the way up. And we'll do a couple more times on each side like this. Driving through the heel to push you up, squeeze at the top, and noticing any adjustments you might have to make, moving your feet a little closer or farther apart here. We'll do three more on each side. Allowing your breath to move you. Last one on each side. Awesome. Squeeze at the top and then begin to pour your weight into your left leg, finding a half moon pose facing the back of the room allowing your left hand to drop somewhere six to nine inches between in front of your left foot. Your right limbs to go up towards the sky. Flex that right foot and allow yourself to fly. Feel the shakiness. And then when you're ready, slowly tip back. Allow your right foot to land. <laughs> Sorry, a lot of sweat here. <laughs> And then frame your right foot, hands plant. Right foot can step back for a three-legged dog. Optionally bend the right knee, open that hip. Take a breath here. Inhale, center, stabilize everything. And then exhale, lowers you down, chaturanga. Inhale, heart bursts open. And exhale, press the hips down, back, and away from you. Downward facing dog. Pedal out the feet here. And then on a big inhale, shift forward into your plank pose, stacking shoulders over wrists. Imagine my hand is in between your shoulder blades and you're pushing it away. Squeeze your glutes. And take five breaths here. One, two, three, almost there, four, squeeze, and five. Allow the knees to tap down. Keep your shoulders engaged as you lower all the way down to the mat. Catch your breath here. Maybe make a pillow for your forehead with your left forearm as you reach back and grab your right ankle for a little quad stretch. Opportunity here to catch the breath. It may even feel good to kick into that right hand a little bit with your right ankle and optionally even 
raise that left arm a little bit, bringing a little half baby cobra. And release everything, taking it to the other side here, allowing your forehead to rest on your right forearm. As you reach back with your left hand, grab your left ankle. Maybe begin to lift the knee a little bit, a little half bow action here, maybe even raising that right arm. Just exploring. As we catch our breath a little bit, meanwhile stretching out the abdomen we just worked. And then release everything down. And you could reach back with both hands now. Bend your knees. Grab your shoelace sides of your feet or your ankles. Push the thighs together and begin to lift at the chest, keeping the neck long. Find a little bit of a bow pose here. Kicking into the feet. Really feel it, feeling the core stretch as the back does so much work. The glutes keep kicking. Give yourself two more breaths. And release all the way down. Take your time. Make your way into a tabletop position. Any authentic movement that might feel good here. And then when you're ready, you can curl the toes, push back for a downward facing dog. Maybe some back and forth presses into a plank. Maybe you've had enough plank. <laughs> and then walk your feet forward or float. Take a nice big in-breath, find all the way standing. Exhale, hands to heart center. Begin to pour all your weight into your left foot. Bend the right knee. See if you can grab the right ankle behind you. Begin to send the left arm up along. Really squeezing here. Finding that alignment. Pressing all four corners of your left foot into the mat. And it might begin to hinge at the hips a little bit. As you hinge forward, kicking into the right back foot. Finding a little bit of a dancer pose here. I personally find my knee really flares out to the side when I do this, so try to see if you can keep those thighs like pressing towards the center. Big breath in. Might find it might be good to find a point of focus, something that's not moving a couple feet in front of you. And if you come out, that's awesome. Just take your time. Opportunity here to gain strength in the left leg. So you kick back with that right foot. One more breath. And slowly releasing out of the pose, finding a standing posture, mountain pose, Tadasana. Take a couple breaths here. Allow the fresh blood to rejuvenate the legs before taking it to the other side, allowing your left palm to grab your left ankle or shoelace side of the foot, keeping the knees pressed together, reaching the right arm long, and then beginning to tip hinge forward to your degree of comfort, kicking into that back foot as you reach forward. Squeezing the right glute, kicking back into your hand. We'll take three more breaths here. And then slowly releasing everything out long. Take a big inhale, reach up towards the sky, and exhale, forward fold. Might feel good to pedal out the feet a little bit here.
Inhale, halfway lift, long spine, hands to shin. Exhale, plant your hands, step your feet back. Lower halfway down for a little push-up. Inhale, heart bursts open for a baby cobra or up dog. And on the exhale, curl the toes, press the hips back and away. Find your downward facing dog. Take a big inhale. And on the exhale, shift forward to your plank. We've already been here, so I won't keep you here too long. But if you'd like, take your right knee, just tap it to your left elbow. Send it back. Take your left knee, tap it to your right elbow. Moving slow and controlled, take five on each side here. We've already done one. <laughs> I personally find that instead of the mountain runners, where you're moving so fast, this is easier on my hips as well as more engaging in my core. One more on each side. And then tap the knees down. Find your way into a seated position with your legs out long in front of you. I'll turn to the side so you can see the side angle. With your legs out long in front of you, you might provide a little bit of support with your hands behind you. Bend the knees, place the soles of the feet down on the mat. And then from here, you can begin to take your hands in front of you. And if you have a weight at home, you could use this. You could also just use a can of beans or a little weight or nothing at all. As you're holding this little imaginary weight, you can begin to twist it over to the left side, tap it down onto your mat on an inhale, and on the exhale, bring it back towards center. Inhale, send it towards the right side. Exhale, bring it towards center. Taking some Russian twists here, you might find it beneficial to lift the heels up as you take these motions side to side. You can take them quicker or faster. Just begin to feel your obliques. Establish that connection. The higher you lift your heels and the farther back you allow your torso to drop, the more it's going to engage the abdomen. You might find that holding a little bit of a boat pose here is just great. But I like to incorporate the twists because the obliques are so hard to get to. And they're so important when it comes to posture. Maybe try on a little bit of both wherever you are. We got about 10 more breaths. Five more breaths. Feel the squeeze. And then allow your heels to tap down if they were up. Allow the hands behind you to take a little bit of the weight. And you can just let your knees rock side to side a little bit here. Opening up the abdomen and the obliques a little bit. Find your breath here. And then from here, allow yourself to find your way onto your back, keeping the knees bent and the feet, the soles of the feet touching the mat. You can reach overhead, bend the elbows, interlace your hands behind your head. Give yourself a little bit of a crunch up here. And from this position with your shoulder blades basically off the mat, allow your knees to extend long, bring your right knee into your chest and tap your right knee to your left elbow. Extend everything long while keeping your shoulder blades lifted and taking it to the other side now, bringing your left knee to tap your right elbow. Moving like this very slowly. Again, just like a bicycle crunch, like we did with the mountain runners, except much slower and more engaged. The hardest part of these bicycle crunches 
is not necessarily crunching the knee into the chest, but rather keeping the shoulder blades lifted. We'll do five more on each side. Really letting the core burn. If you'd like to tap the shoulder blades down in between, absolutely feel free. Just know it's harder to get up <laughs> once you give up. <laughs> so find your edge, breathe into it a little bit. Got one more on each side here. I promise I'm done with abs after this. One last one, crunch, and release everything long. <sighs> Allow yourself to bend your knees and find a little bit of a glute bridge like we did in the beginning here. Just stretching out that abdomen. And then when you feel ready, just releasing everything long to the mat. With the knees bent, you might let them rock side to side for a moment, or maybe bring your knees into your chest, give them a squeeze. And then with your knees bent and the soles of your feet placed on your mat, you might open the feet a little bit wider. You can allow the arms to go long to the side. Allow the head to look over the left shoulder as you drop your knees to the right. See what variations feel good for you here. You might like to pull the knees a little closer up towards the body. You might like to extend that top left leg long. Maybe even interlace that left leg over and underneath the right knee. Just try to keep your left shoulder down and engaged, incorporating the whole spine into the twist, looking over that opposite shoulder. Noticing your breath. If you've settled into a spot you know is perfect for you, that's great. If you want to play around with any of those variations at any time, feel free. See what feels different on each side. This is your practice, so it's most important that it's feeling productive for your body. Give yourself five more breaths here, wherever you are. Allowing gravity to do the work. Just being is plenty. One more breath. Awesome. And then when you feel ready, if you feel ready, you can slowly make your way to the other side, bringing the knees back towards center, giving yourself a moment here perhaps, and then taking it to the other side, dropping the knees to the left, looking over the right shoulder. Again, noticing the subtle differences on each side. Maybe stillness or movement feels better here any of those variations that you tried on on the other side. Most important thing you can do here is just breathe. We've built all the fire in the body for this exact purpose. Being able to just let that do the work. Let the nervous system take over. It knows the healing work that needs to be done on a cellular level. So just breathe. Surrender.
Give yourself three more breaths here. One more breath. And then taking the knees back towards center. Let everything even out. Maybe some side to side rocking. Maybe knee into the chest for a little bit of squeeze. And then let yourself rock and roll all the way up to a seat or maybe just roll over onto your side and find a seated position with your legs out long in front of you take a moment and really find the elongation and of the spine big inhale and on the exhale you might begin to fold over your hips hinging forward see if you can grab your shins or your ankles or even your toes and use those as a, a weight with your shoulders relaxed just something to hold on to pulling you forward pulling the direction of your energy forward you can let your neck hang heavy Letting an in-breath elongate you and an out-breath give you a little bit of freedom and space. You might find there's some freedom of movement or some space you didn't know was there. So allow your breath to be that, that catalyst. As always... And take 10 more breaths here. If you notice your mind is somewhere else, just note it. No problem. And just come back to the felt sensation of this pose or your breath. Five more breaths. Last big inhale. And let it go. And you can slowly, however you get there, make your way onto your belly. Extending your legs out long behind you. Take your time getting there. Anything at home that would help make this more comfortable, an extra mat, extra blocks, blankets, absolutely feel free to use them. Take your time. You'll find a little bit of a half frog here. Begin to bend your right knee and send it out to the side, allowing the right hip to open. You might pull the knee in a little bit closer to the abdomen and keep everything just more engaged towards the center. I like to really let my right leg go long. Just see what feels good for you. My other favorite thing to do in this pose is lift up my right ankle a little bit and activate the glute. That gets into my piriformis muscle, which gives me a lot of trouble sometimes. So see what feels good for you. This can be a really relaxing pose or it can be really engaging, just depending where you're placing your effort and energy. So see what your body needs. And then once you've found that feel-good spot that feels productive for you and your body, 
Just let your forehead rest down. Your eyes may even shut. And just tap into the sensations of the pose or your breath. Maybe the feeling of your belly rising and falling, kind of pressing into the earth as you breathe. And see if you can stay present with the sensations in the body. Noticing where the mind goes. And give yourself a couple more breaths here to really explore the opening we've created. And then slowly allowing the right leg to extend out long behind you if you feel ready no rush at all and if you feel ready you might take it to the other side now extending the left knee out towards the side keeping it bent and playing around with again any of the variations so maybe you just keep it where it is maybe you pull it a little closer into the body maybe you let it extend a little longer even press that left heel up towards the sky always taking a moment to see which variation feels best for you before just settling down and giving yourself a couple breaths here Staying present with the sensations of the posture and the breath, the feeling of weight. And giving yourself a few more breaths here. Before slowly coming out of the posture, just extending your legs out long behind you. Might feel good to rock the hips side to side a little bit. Maybe bending the knees, making a little windshield wiper action here. And when you're ready, you can flip onto your back however you get there, moving slow and controlled. You can bend the right knee, give it a squeeze. Avoid the rib cage as you pull your right knee into your chest. Flex the right foot to protect the right knee. Just give yourself a couple breaths here. And then taking it to the other side, letting the right leg go long, pulling the left knee into the chest, giving it a squeeze, flexing the left ankle, avoiding the rib cage. A couple breaths here. And then bend both knees, place the soles of the feet together. And then maybe with the help of the hands, you can slowly begin to open the knees wide to your degree of comfort. Eventually finding a place that feels right for you in this butterfly posture. 
your hands could rest to the inside of your thigh to provide a little extra weight, or maybe just long alongside your body, palms facing up. Static movement, static or movement might feel good here. You might hold and just let gravity do the work. I like to pump my knees a little bit like a butterfly wing and just kind of see the flexibility on each side. I also love to keep one hand on my belly here, just feeling the breath coming in and out. Wherever you find yourself, just staying present with whatever sensations arise here. And we'll give it 10 more breaths. See if you can follow the journey of each breath. and the trip it makes through your body. Feeling the subtle coolness as you inhale and the heat of the breath on the exhale. Five more breaths. And if you find your mind wandering, just be kind. No problem. Just gently bring yourself back to your breath. We've got two more here. When you feel ready, you may use your hands to provide a little bit of support, bringing the knees back in together towards the center. Might bring the knees into the chest, give them a little bit of a squeeze, maybe some rocking side to side. Massaging out the low back maybe. And then taking any other postures that might feel good for you. That could be more of this rocking side to side. You might send the heels up towards the sky for one last little hamstring stretch here. Seeing how it feels different from the beginning of the class. Maybe a full body stretch. Whatever feels good for you, just take those moments before settling down, letting everything go long, your arms to relax alongside the body, palms facing up, toes can go out wide. Really let yourself sink down here. Your eyes can close. Noticing your breath. And see if you can follow the journey of just 
five breaths. Maybe even counting to yourself silently. Maybe they're the deepest breaths you've taken today. If there's anywhere you're holding on tension, just let it go. from where you are is perfect. And I'd like to share with you a poem by Thich Nhat Hanh this morning. Something to consider as you wrap up your practice and move into your day and the week ahead of you. You are still the child who gently places fallen baby birds back in their nests. You are still the soft soul that gets your heart broken over cruel words and awful acts when you watch the news. You are still the gentle heart who once tried to heal a flower by sticking its petals back when ignorant feet trampled it. This is why you're important. This is why you will always be needed. Kindness is the greatest endangered thing. And here you are, existing, with your heart so full of it. Take another big breath in. Let it go. Slowly begin to wake up the body a little bit, maybe wiggling the fingers and the toes. Take a moment, notice the sounds around you, the room you're in. Just bringing yourself back. And you can slowly make your way onto your side in a fetal position. You might like to end your practice just like this. Take your time. Otherwise, you may press up into your hands and make your way into a seat. Wherever you are, just give yourself a breath. Notice the difference, as always, how you feel in your mind and body after taking the time for yourself like this, moving forward with kindness for yourself and everybody around you. You might rub your palms together a little bit in front of your heart. Thank you so much for joining us at Mystic and for tuning in at home and on Instagram and Facebook. Thank you so much. Have a great Monday. I'll be back here next week. If you have any questions, always reach out. Namaste. Happy Monday.